What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. We're here going my core plays for week 11 of the NFL season on DraftKings and FanDuel. If you enjoy, make sure you have a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. Let's dive right into it. And as always, if you like what you see on the screen behind me, it's available completely free for a week over on my Patreon with the new free week trials. You can find that link down below in the description or the pinned comment. It has access into my entire NFL model, which has projections for both sites, DraftKings and FanDuel, my optimizer, ownership projections, my cheat sheet going over cash games, tournaments, position by position. My Discord community, which is active 24-7, which is always a blast to be in. And my data sheet that is color-coded nice and neat, so it's easy to follow all the necessary information that I look at each and every single week to help me take down contests. And just to be transparent, I typically play only single entries and three maxes on the main slates, but then for showdowns, that's when I'll start to play the 150s, which I've had a lot of success so far this season. But like I said, completely free for a week, and if you like it, you can stay. If not, Tony Kick Rocks, you're not going to hurt my feelings, maybe a little bit, but I'll get over it. And as always, we will start with the quarterback position, and honestly, this is a fun slate i feel like the last two weeks for week nine and week 10 the slates were really just hard to get excited about but honestly i'm looking forward to it this week to build some lineups because there's many ways we can go and lots of good spots and if you want to spend up go in the middle down low i think we have you covered this week so we do have a lot of quarterbacks listed i believe seven so i'll try to go through them a little quick but up top we have Tua, and i think a lot of people will be afraid of the matchup they're just looking at the numbers on paper the Raiders are currently allowing the 8th fewest points in the position, 213 passing yards and barely over 1 passing touchdown with close to an interception per game, only 15 fantasy points. But look, I realize the matchup is not great, but what I care most about is this massive implied team total. Yes, I know it's a great matchup on the ground for guys like Devonta Chan and Raheem Mostert. I think they'll eat as well. But Tua is averaging nearly 300 passing yards per game, over 2 passing touchdowns. 70% completion percentage and 8.6 yards per attempt, throwing the ball over 30 times. Now, the only downside here is that the game script does not look good, 12 and a half point favorites, but that's not to say. If they're getting a big lead, that could just be because he hooked up with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle three times, got you 280 yards and three touchdowns, and that would be perfectly fine below 8K. So I don't think the ownership will be very high, so he's a tournament only play for me, but he definitely looks like he'll be under owned in GPPs. CJ Stroud at $7,000 should be one of the more popular quarterbacks on the slate. I currently have him top three in ownership, him and Brock Purdy. I'm expecting to be the chunk this weekend. But at 7000 bucks, the way he's been playing the past couple of weeks in a great matchup versus the Arizona Cardinals in a game that features the highest over of the week, at least on this slate, at 48.5, 5.5 point spread and a 27 point implied team total. He gets Nico Collins back this week, loses Noah Brown, so... I would say Nico Collins is probably better than Noah Brown, but he's been balling out the previous two weeks, but he should be fine either way. And if you're looking at the Cardinals numbers this season versus quarterbacks, currently 19th versus the position, allowing 230 passing yards and one and a half passing touchdowns per game. So hopefully the hot streak continues for CJ Stroud, but I'd be surprised if it doesn't at home versus Arizona. Jared Goff for the Detroit Lions. He has been balling out this season, gets a really soft matchup versus Chicago Bears, who are currently 27th versus quarterbacks, meaning they're allowing the six most points per game in the position. Throwing the ball over 33 times per game. He's got Amon Ross St. Brown out there. Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield in this offense has been humming. 27.5 implied team total. And this spread did drop. I believe it was at 10 points earlier in the week. Now that's at 7.5. Justin Fields is expected to be back, which is good for the Chicago Bears, I think, to at least keep this game somewhat close. And we have seen before this season where Detroit has struggled versus mobile quarterbacks like Lamar Jackson when he absolutely lit them up. So I'm hoping it's a closer game than what it's expected to be on paper. And if it is, there's a ton of potential here for this Lions offense, especially in the passing attack, because the Bears have been pretty stiff versus the run this season, even though for the fantasy points wise, it doesn't look that great. And then we have Matthew Stafford, who seems to be my dart throw of the week. I don't see him really getting any hype. But I think this game does have some upside here. It's a one-point spread, which I love. We're at home in a dome. The 425 slot as well. So it's a late-night hammer. And 46.5 over under, which is one of the higher game totals of the week. And we have two beatable defenses here in Seattle and Los Angeles. And he is by far my worst projected quarterback here. If I head over to my... Oh, I have this statted out. And I always forget to mention that I have this. I do have the entire slate statted out, but I'm only just showing the quarterbacks. That I have on here. And as you can see, Matthew Stafford is uh, definitely a couple tiers below everybody else. I have Stroud in the top spot this week at 20.4. And as you can see, Brock Purdy is definitely going to be a very popular quarterback option this week. I have him at 3.4x value and 19.5 points. I think it's pretty modest versus Tampa Bay. He definitely has upside for 20 plus. But yeah, I have Stafford pretty low. The passing touchdowns have not been there this season. He offers you absolutely zero rushing upside, which sucks as well. 251 passing yards, 1.4 passing touchdowns. But with how he's performed this season, I think those projections from a median standpoint is fair. But I think there is upside for more. So if you were playing tournaments, sometimes you don't always play the best projection plays. 
So if you're looking for a low owned tourney play, because both Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are priced pretty fairly. And on the season, Seattle is currently 19th versus quarterbacks, allowing 260 passing yards per game, nearly 20 fantasy points. So if some of the chalk busts on this slate, Matthew Stafford can get you close to 20 fantasy points. I don't hate it for GPPs, but probably only large field. I don't think I can do it in a single entry. Then we have Sam Howell, the Washington Commanders. He's been balling out recently. 290 passing yards, 1.7 passing touchdowns, and throwing the ball over 36 times per game on the season. He's got some decent weapons to get the ball to. Antonio Gibson is going to be out for this game. We have Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dotson, and I guess Brad Robinson out of the backfield now, and Logan Thomas. So I'm fine with it in a good spot versus the Giants. They're pretty much middle of the road versus quarterbacks, and they do have a 23-point implied team total. The only concern would be is that they're 9.5-point favorites at home, and I'm not really sure how much of a fight the Giants offense is going to put up. But if they're going to ever stay in a game, it might happen here versus this Washington Commanders defense. That is dreadful. Kyler Murray at 6100 bucks, just on the flip side of this Houston Texans game where CJ Stroud's going to be very popular. Kyler Murray's going to have somewhat of ownership this week, I think, at this low price point. He had a rushing touchdown last week, and we did see four design runs for 33 yards, which was nice to see, and got into the end zone. Has 7.8 yards per attempt mark in his first week, threw the ball 30 times, 250 passing yards, and did not get into the end zone. But not the greatest matchup in the world versus Houston, but you can't run on them a bit, which bodes well for Kyler Murray, but he's mainly just a price play and the stacking options are extremely cheap, but I definitely prefer trying to find the extra $1,000 for CJ Stroud in this game. And then Brock Purdy, I think he's your cash game QB this week. I don't love the spread here at 11 and a half points, but a 26.5 implied team total for a quarterback below 6K on a great offense that can put up points. You have Brandon Ayuk outside you have Debo Samuel who can make plays all over the field George Kittle is one of the best game breaking tight ends in the league and he's currently not throwing the ball a ton only 25 times per game but at 9.3 yards per jump with a 68 percent completion percentage and the Tampa Buccaneers suck versus quarterbacks allowing the fifth most points per game and nearly 300 passing yards and heading over to our lineup like I said so many quarterbacks we can pick from this week but I'm from Ohio Let's roll with the Ohio State guy, CJ Stroud, and we move on from there. Now we have running backs, and I don't really see myself spending top dollar for a running back this weekend like Christian McCaffrey or Ross Neckler because the mid-range and cheap running backs below 6K honestly look really good this week point per dollar wise. So that's probably the range I will go in. And if I can spend up a wide receiver, I think that'll be my preferred way to go. But up top, we have Jameer Gibbs of the Detroit Lions. Now he's going to be in a timeshare with Dave Montgomery. But with Montgomery's first game back last week versus the Los Angeles Chargers, we saw Jameer Gibbs out snap, out touch, and get a couple goal line carries over David Montgomery. Now, apparently, I saw this video on Twitter where Gibbs did say that Montgomery was supposed to come in around the goal line and get his goal line touchdown, but he asked Jameer Gibbs if he wanted the, the touchdown since he got him all the way down there, and he said yes, obviously. So, at least I think that means he'll still have his goal line role, but it's going to be more of a split. And Jameer Gibbs did have two goal line touchdowns in that game. And it is one of the best running backs in football. He's electric. He can make big plays happen any single time. He gets the ball. And the coach did say heading into last week that he kind of carved out more of a role in this offense. And the 27.5 implied team total for the Detroit Lions here, seven and a half point favorites at home. And while this is not the greatest matchup in the world, you probably wouldn't know that if you're just looking at the fantasy points allowed per game as they're currently ranked 20th versus the position. But they're only allowing 59 rushing yards per game, which is one of the lowest. I think it's only better than the Philadelphia Eagles so far this season. But they are struggling through the air, which is kind of Jameer Gibbs' bread and butter. 61 receiving yards, 6 catches, half receiving touchdown on the season, a 15.5% target share and 5.3 targets per game. But if we're going to have a nice solidified role here for Jameer Gibbs, and he's receiving 5-plus targets and getting us close to 12, 15 carries on the ground, with his talent and how good this offense is and the offensive line, that's going to be hard to not like. And then we have the Miami duo of Raheem Mostert and Devonna Chan. He is returning from IR this week, so it's going to be interesting to see how much he's going to be used in this offense because we do know there's already three running backs in this offense that can run the show and Raheem Mostert is really good himself at 5.6 yards per carry this season and all time I mean Raheem Mostert's one of the better more efficient backs in the league it's just always been an issue for him having injury problems but he's been able to stay healthy so far this season but efficiency has never been an issue with him but he really gets overshadowed because Devon Chan is currently at 12.1 yards per carry in the season now less volume of course and this is not sustainable. If you were telling me that Devonta Chan is two to three times better efficiency-wise than any other elite running back in the history of the NFL, well, I'm just sorry. This is not going to keep happening. Not to say he can't be a five yards per carry guy, but he is just not going to continue being at 12 yards per touch, which is absolutely insane. But he's got game-breaking speed. The dude looks amazing, and this is a great offense. And both these guys are fine in tournaments. But since there's so many guys in this backfield now that can receive touches, it's going to be a bit of a rotation. It makes it really hard to trust for cash games. But in tournaments, sure, you can take a 
take a flyer on it and hope you get the right guy. But it's a great spot. 29.5 implied team total, 12 and a half point favorites at home. And the Raiders are currently 25th versus running backs. Tony Paul is another guy that I like a lot this week, especially over on Fandle, below $7,000. He is cheaper than guys like Aaron Jones, same price as James Conner, and not too far off of Devin Singletary. The thing is, though, I get it. He's been pretty bad this season. The efficiency is at an all-time low from seasons past. Keep in mind, he's coming off that big injury from last year, so I'm sure that's affecting him in some way, some shape or form. But this is another perfect spot versus the Carolina Panthers, 10.5 point favorites on the road, 26 point implied team total, and they are getting shredded on the ground this season. 30.4 points per game, which is the second most. 120 rushing yards and nearly one and a half rushing touchdowns. And Tony Potter cannot get the job done this week. I'm not sure when he's ever going to do it. So we'll cut bait if it's a if it's a bust week for Tony Pollard, but I'm willing to go right back to the well with no hard feelings from last week. We had the opportunity versus the Giants and we were on the goal line several times, but Dak Prescott must have some MVP bets on himself because we just were not giving Tony Pollard the ball too often when we got inside the five. He did have a couple cracks at it, but just could not amount to much. Then we have Brees Hall of the New York Jets, 6,400 bucks. Good matchup versus Buffalo. They're currently 24th versus running backs. I do worry about the potential game script with them being seven-point dogs on the road. Only a 16.5 implied team total. Going to Brees Hall, one of the better running backs in football. And he's going to be involved in the passing game. So even if they are trailing, hopefully we can get some dump-offs here. And they did cut Michael Carter, and Dalvin Cook is complete dust. So I guess that bodes well for Brees Hall even more so, especially at this price point, mid-6K. Aaron Jones at 6,200 bucks, really good matchup versus the Chargers. They're allowing the fifth most points per game to the running back position. And he's heavily involved in the passing game. We've had over 10 plus targets the previous two weeks. And if we can get 10 plus carries on the ground and around five targets, that's good enough volume for me at this price point and a plus matchup at home versus that Chargers defense. Brian Robinson, no Antonio Gibson this week. So it looks like he's going to be the main back here. We do have Chris Rodriguez, but he's not really a guy that I think profiles well as a pass catcher. So if we're going to get more passing game involvement from Brian Robinson, then at 50, 100 bucks versus the Giants run defense, I will take that all day. Nine and a half point favorites at home, 23 point implied team total. He's not the best running back in the world, but we've seen him have upside. We saw last week a 52 yard touchdown through the air from Sam Howe. And the Giants are currently 21st versus running backs, allowing over 110 rushing yards per game. So with no Antonio Gibson, I think Brian Robinson is one of the better value backs on the entire week. James Conner returned from injury last week, 5,700 bucks, took over his workhorse role. I would imagine gets 15 plus touches in this game. It's a good matchup versus Houston. We know they struggle versus the run. Early 19th versus running backs this year, allowing only 75 rushing yards per game, but nearly a rushing touchdown on 40 yards through the air. We know James Conner is going to be the main guy here, so we'll just take the volume below 6K in a good matchup in what should be a pretty high scoring game. Should have some touchdown equity here. And then Devin Singletary, 5,300 bucks. I imagine he's going to be the most popular running back of the week, and it makes a ton of sense. Now, personally for us, we have CJ Stroud in our lineup, so we're not going to go Singletary route. And it really hurts because he is so cheap and he's going to get so much volume. He's one of my best projected running backs on the week. Point per dollar wise, I'm pretty sure he's number one. But it's a perfect spot. We know Arizona, they struggle versus the run. They just struggle defensively overall. I mean, the third most points for getting the position. But 27 point implied team total at home. Five and a half point favorites and the highest over under the week. Makes a ton of sense to play Devin Singletary, especially with no Damian Pierce this week. Heading back over to our build, I'm going to try to save a little bit of money at running back. So even though I love Jameer Gibbs, I like Tony Pollard a lot. We're going to Square it a little bit. And as much as I want to play Dave, Devin Singletary, I'm not going to be able to do it in this build because I don't want to roll out four Texans. And it's not the best correlation having Singletary with guys like, I don't know, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, whoever we go with at the wide receiver position for pass catching options with CJ Stroud. So let's roll out Brees Hall here at 6400 bucks. I know the potential game strip wouldn't be great, but he's obviously going to get passing opportunity as well. So I like that price point and a good matchup versus Buffalo. Then Brad Robinson of the Washington Commanders, big week last week, but I promise I'm not point chasing. I'm mainly interested here because Antonio Gibson's going to be out, and this game script is perfect for Robinson this week. Moving on to wide receiver, as I always say, let's try to simplify this because there are so many options every single week, and it can kind of be overwhelming on where to start. But keep in mind, though, whatever quarterback we use, it's going to already lock up like three to four positions in our build already, just based off of the quarterback that we picked. So since we went C.J. Stroud, that means we're looking at guys like Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and then want a run back option. Now, it could be a tight end like Trey McBride, or we could also use Dalton Schultz to pair with CJ Stroud. But we're already filling out at least three spots based off the quarterback we pick. So you kind of have to flow, follow the flow chart of where you're going, and it's going to make things a little bit easier. Now, you can't stack your entire lineup up, so it's always fine to have some one offs. Like if you can afford Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross St. Brown, Cooper Cup, go for it. But I am going to start out by using the pass catching options that correlate with my quarterback. And then we'll move on from there to see what fits after we do that. Because you need to build around that. 
But if you are looking for one-offs here, and obviously if you have Brock Purdy, you're looking at guys like Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and the current back with a guy like Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. Just depends on the quarterback that you're using. But Tyree Kill, if you had the money for him, he's definitely the best projection play at wide receiver. I don't care what the matchup says. It doesn't look great on paper versus the Raiders. But when you have a 29.5 implied team total, and you are averaging 120 yards, two and a half targets, and nearly receiving touchdown per game, and you have game-breaking speed. The matchup just doesn't matter at that point. Amon Rice Sam Brown's one of the safest plays of the position every single week. This is a team that's going to put up points every single weekend, and the Bears are pretty below average versus the pass this season with that high implied team total. Yeah, it should be another great week for Amon Rice St. Brown. Cooper Cup's a little bit too cheap, in my opinion. I like him a lot at $8,100. I know it's been a bad three-week stretch, but that should just mean it's going to be lower ownership, but I'm all about it. This project well and point, but otherwise, it looks really good at only $8,100. And I guess we'll kind of group together Mike Evans, Brandon Ayuk, and Debo Samuel. I like all these guys in this game and good matchups all around. If we look at how Tampa Bay has fared versus wide receivers this season for Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, currently allowing the third most points per game to the position at 43, 197 receiving yards. I mean, Brandon Ayuk has a ton of upside. 46% market share of the team's air yards, 15.8 on the season, seven targets per game and a 27.5% target share. If you're playing Brock Purdy, you have to play at least one of these guys. Brandon Ayuk is definitely the preferred option. Debo Samuel a little bit cheaper. There's not as involved in the passing game, but we know he has big play upside and is going to be used all around the field and get some rushing attempts as well. And Mike Evans with them being such big dogs on the road, I believe it's now at 10.5 is the spread, or 11.5 actually, so even more. So for Mike Evans, very low implied team total for Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Buccaneers. But the 49ers are currently 25th versus wide receivers, and it should be a very positive game script for him. At least get plenty of opportunity to do well. Then Puka Nakua, you can lump him in with Cooper Cup if you are game stacking that one up. DK Metcalf, he would be your run back option there. Nico Collins and Tank Dell going to be pretty popular options this week, especially Tank Dell. We know the upside is there. 21% target share on the season, same for Nico Collins, both receiving roughly seven targets per game. And have been able to find the end zone quite often, so plenty of upside there with both of those guys. Christian Kirk, while he's not the most exciting wide receiver in football, he's definitely pretty consistent. And this is a plus matchup versus the Titans secondary, so I'm fine with him. Next two are going to be tournament only plays for me, Terry McLaurin and DJ Moore. And it really just comes down to my stacks. Like if I have Sam Howell, McLaurin's going to be my number one option. And if I'm doing a Detroit stack, DJ Moore is really the only guy from the Bears that I'd have any interest in as far as being a run back option. They have three Cardinals in a row, Marquise Brown, Michael Wilson, and Rondell Moore in their first game back with Kyler Murray. Four targets for Brown, I believe six targets for Wilson, and eight targets for Rondell Moore and Trey McBride led the way but i'm fine with any of them although i do prefer the value options with michael wilson and rondell moore and i'll be honest i hate all the really cheap wide receivers this week so it looks like taking one of the cardinals which would make a lot of sense since we already have a texan stack going the correlation would be there heading over to our lineup like i said we need two pass catchers with cj strauss number one for me is going to be tank dell at 5900 bucks just love that price point i do expect him to be pretty popular but it is what it is gotta stack them with them and then we could either go nico collins or dalton schultz i know we haven't talked about tight ends yet so I guess I'll wait until we do it. But since Nico Collins is close to $7,000, I don't think it would hurt us too much in the salary department to play him. We have $4,500, and then we could maybe throw in Trey McBride. We should have enough money to do it if we want. So for right now, let's go with Nico Collins. And if we can't afford him, we'll drop down to Dalton Schultz and work some magic around. But let's roll with it for now. And now we have tight ends and defenses. Not usually the most glamorous part of these videos, but honestly, the tight end position has gotten better. I think in recent weeks, we have plenty of options. It seems like in the mid-range weekend week out so george kittle for me he's only going to be played if i go with brock purdy and he's my secondary stacking option if i don't go with debo samuel in addition to brandon Ayuk, that's the only reason i am playing him he's just so expensive for a guy that doesn't see as many targets compared to some of these other guys that we're about to talk about i know the upside is there the dude's an absolute beast 60 yard touchdown last week but i would rather have better volume at a cheaper price point sam laporte is fine gets roughly seven targets per game on 21 and a half percent target share you are rolling out Jared Goff, him and Amon Ross St. Brown. They're going to be your top two stacking options pretty much weekly. And there's always a good chance to find the end zone. Dalton Schultz, 5000 bucks. If I did not go with Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz would be my preferred other option with Tank Dell this week. 5000 bucks, seeing six targets per game, 18% target share. And also 0.44 receiving touchdowns per game all tied here with George Kittle and Sam Laporta. Trey McBride's going to be our run back option here at 4400 bucks. I know the overall numbers don't look great, but keep in mind he was playing behind Zach Ertz for a little bit. But ever since he's had the starting role, the dude's been an absolute target hog, an absolute beast in the fantasy point department. So I like him a lot this week and will probably end up being very popular once again, but deservedly so. The price keeps rising, but I think he should be right around $5,000 and the fact that he's not does scream value to me still. Then Evan Ingram at $4,300 has yet to find the end zone this season. Well, honestly, he's been very consistent. 50 yards per game, over six catches, over seven targets, a 23% target share. And this is a plus matchup versus that Titans secondary. So I think he's a fine option as well if you don't want to go with Trey McBride. And I would tell you right now, I hate defense this week because the best two by far for me are the Steelers and the Commanders. I also like the Browns. 
The problem is 35, 36, and 3,700 bucks. And if you guys know me, I do not spend up for defenses because there's just so much luck baked into it where I just don't really feel comfortable doing it. So if we scroll all the way down here and find the first viable one implied team total wise, there's really not much to like. Now we do have the Packers with a 23 point implied team total against them. That's not the worst. Down here, it's only three point spread and they are playing at home. I am projected for 2.7 X value, which looking at my list here, that's third best only behind the Seahawks or not the Seahawks, I'm sorry, the Dolphins at 2.8 versus the Raiders. And then I have the Steelers at 3.0 versus Cleveland. So I don't hate the Packers if we need an absolute punt option. Don't love playing defenses versus the Chargers, but at least it's on the road. And then we have the ones I already mentioned. So basically it's the Packers, the Jets, I don't mind either because we know Josh Allen can turn the football over. And since I have Brees Hall in my lineup, that might not be the worst correlation play in the world. And then if you are spending up a bit, like I said, Steelers, Commanders, and the Browns make the most sense. All right, so let's finish this lineup off. We already have our two stacking options with CJ Stratz. So let's find a run back option. And for me, Trey McBride does make the most sense. He gets such consistent volume in that offense. Six, 14, five, nine targets last week with Kyler Murray. So we're gonna roll with him. We have 4,600 bucks left for our last three spots. So this is definitely doable. And I don't, I'm not saying I love to play defenses versus Josh Allen, but he does turn the ball over a lot. So I don't hate it here since we have Brees Hall. So if we plug in the Jets defense, these 600 bucks left and that's actually a decent spot to be in because when we talked about wide receiver there was a few in that range that i thought made some sense here like we have dj moore terry mclaurin christian kirk i'd be comfortable with any of those so if we happen to go the christian kirk route that's 5200 bucks left for our remaining spot which it's a bit of a weird range because we're left with ford warren harris dotson deontay johnson like i said though if we wanted to try to switch it up a little bit and save some cash we could take out nico collins and put Dalton Schultz here in the tight end spot. And then we can run it back with a cheaper wide receiver from Arizona, like Michael Wilson here is only $3,400. Assuming he plays, it's currently questionable. But that would leave us with nearly $7,000 left for our remaining spot. And that would definitely open it up a little bit. So if we wanted to maybe get someone like Puka Nakua or Brandon Ayuk, I think that would work as well. And then we could drop down to, well, we'd still be able to get Nico Collins, but then we're triple stacking at that point. But you have Tony Pollard, Kenneth Walker, Chris Goblin, all fine options. Then you also have Devon Chan here as well. So it does put us in a little bit of better of a price range. But I'll leave that open to your imagination and pick your favorite one. But the overall roster construction for this build doesn't look bad. Now, please don't copy and paste this. I'm not going to be using it. I'm just trying to follow the rules that I have for single entries and three maxes where I get two pass catching options with my quarterback and then I try to find a run back option. And then we fill in the rest from there. I'm just using players that we talked about. But we have CJ Stroud double stack with Tank Dell. And Dalton Schultz, you can also go the Nico Collins route as well and run it back with either Michael Wilson or Trey McBride, depending on the route you went with. Brace Hall, and you pair it with the Jets defense. There's a little bit of correlation there. Brad Robinson with no Antonio Gibson. Then we have Brandon Ayuk because he fit. And overall, I don't think that's a terrible build for single entries. And as per usual, we're going to go over my optimizer and see who's popping the most as of right now. Now it's Friday night, so this could obviously change by the time kickoff happens on 1 p.m. on Sunday. I do not have my ownership projections up currently because I try to keep that for the Patreon members. But let's go over to the builds here. I put some very slight settings on just to make sure I have stacking options, a little bit of randomness. So these are not the exact projections. And then I pretty much just ran 150 really quick. And we're going to check and see what players are populating the most. Because as I always say, I can't be that far off the rest of the industry. So this will give you guys a good idea who's going to be popular this weekend. Now I'm not going to have the exact same projections as everyone else. But again, they're probably going to be somewhat similar. So as we can see, Tank Dell getting absolutely jammed in there looks like kyler murray's cj stroud are my highest owned quarterbacks at least projection wise that are going to get put in lineups now there can be several factors for that because if it likes their pass catching options obviously they're going to get put in there as well just because the lineups are supposed to correlate but as you can see cj stroud and kyler murray loves that game a ton which i do as well it's got the highest total of the week a decently close spread i don't think it's going to be a blowout or anything and two defenses that can definitely be scored on michael wilson very popular run back option here but he's just so cheap and i think i've projected for around eight nine fantasy points which at his price point is going to be enough. Steelers defense, Devin Singletary makes a lot of sense there. Looking at the most popular teams for me, Houston, Arizona, Jacksonville, Washington, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Miami, which I'm pretty much in agreement with. And those are going to correlate with the game stacks that are showing up the highest. So if you ever want access to this to build your own lineups or just take a look at it and I'll have ownership projections up by the time you view it, you can do that in the link down below the description or the pinned comment. But with that being said, that's all I got for today's video. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. We have the Thanksgiving slate next week, so I'll have a couple sets of videos. So be on the lookout for that. But I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all next time.